Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with the Walters World and today we're outside of San Juan del Sur, Nicaragua. We're going to talk about some things you should know before you come to Nicaragua. Because a lot of people, I mean, our, our ideas of Nicaragua are the IRN Contra Fair, the Sandinistas and all these kind of things. And the thing is, is Nicaragua is really starting to develop as a travel destination uh, for a few reasons. One, there's great beaches here, the volcanoes to check out, the islands in Nic Lake Nicaragua, going to Granada and see the colonial city of there. There's a lot of cool stuff to do around the country. And the thing is, is a lot of people are used to going to Costa Rica, which is really developed and it's starting to get a little pricey. So it's trying to come to Nicaragua, which is a lot cheaper vacation. So what I want to do is just give you some kind of helpful tips about things you should know before you do come here to Nicaragua because it is worth visiting but there's some things you should know and one of the things you want to look at is you know what part of the country should we go to or where should we go look you got the <laughs> you've got Lake Nicaragua this huge lake in the southern part of the uh, southern part of the country and in there there's the double volcanoes that you can go check out the Ometepe or Ometepe uh, Island which you can go see there that's really kind of cool in the southwest you got San Juan del Sur which is a good surfing spot to go there it's like a little surf town you go to the beaches to the north and south and try to do surfing or maybe you want to do some sport fishing stuff like that you've got granada which is probably the most popular place for people to go when they do come here to Gran uh, to nicaragua because all the colonial cities and you can go see the volcanoes and there's a volcano by there where you can actually if the weather is right you can actually still see the lava down there so it is kind of a cool thing to do or you can go to the easlets by granada you can go up to leon and see that but the thing is it's mostly you're going to stay on the west the southwest and west part of the country Managua, the capital, it got destroyed in an earthquake in the 70s and a lot of the stuff wasn't rebuilt. So maybe not the best place to check out. So, but definitely go with other places like Granada, Leon, things like that. If you're looking to go to the east part of the country, it's a little difficult to get there because of all the, the forest, the mangrove forest and stuff like that. Probably the only big place you want to check out if you're looking at the east part of the country is the Corn Islands. Now that's really cool. But aside from that, you're going to be sticking towards the west. Anyway, I want to get that out of the way. So when you come here to visit Nicaragua, one thing you need to know is you do need to know some Spanish because the tourism industry here is very in the nascent phase, the very beginning of the phase because Costa Rica has gotten so expensive that now people are coming here for that cheap vacation in Central America. And so one thing you need to know is, like I said, you need to know some Spanish. The hola, hi, gracias, thank you, por favor, please. You know, how to buy a ticket. These things have become very, very important because what I've seen is, is the people says they don't speak much English here at all, anywhere. I mean, in the bigger cities, some of the tourism stuff will, but if you're going to the rural areas, English is almost non-existent. And so if you speak a little bit of Spanish with them, the people open up, and they feel more comfortable talking to you. And that's one thing we noticed, like really you could see the people like kind of tense, and then we'd speak Spanish with them, and then they're like, oh, okay, I'll be glad to help you out. Well, the people have been very nice here, so just wanna let you know, Spanish is a must. Now, when you're looking at coming here, I've said, look, this is a, a pretty cheap vacation, especially compared to Costa Rica. Hotels here, I would say 25 to $35 a night. You can get a decent, a small hotel room, but a decent hotel room, you know, a couple beds and a place to put your stuff. So, it's, you know, and you can go obviously higher prices and go to resorts and, and kind of like bungalow cities and stuff like that. But 25, 35 bucks, you can easily get by in a nice little hotel. Um, going out to eat here is super cheap. You know, you go to the market for breakfast and have like a meal at the market, $2. Go to a restaurant, maybe it's four or five dollars for a meal and that's the thing is coming here is super super affordable transportation lodging food which is really nice and you might want to ask yourself well how do i pay when i'm here look in the bigger cities and some of those things you can use credit card occasionally but it's very much a cash-based society here and you can pay in cordobas that's the local currency or dollars okay they'll exchange it right there you know you can pay that way now the thing is if you're going to be just paying with dollars it, a lot of the stuff is actually really, really affordable. So instead of paying, paying the 10 Cordobas to use the bathroom in the market and in San Juan del Sur, um, you're going to pay a dollar. Okay, so if you want to, you know, if you have small things you're buying, it's best to pay in Cordobas. Bigger stuff, you can pay in dollars, no problem. And we've had no problem either way. Um, but just know that finding ATMs outside the, the, the bigger cities or towns is a little bit more difficult. So make sure you bring cash when you're here. And you might be worried, well, Mark, is it safe to bring cash there? If you're going to some of the tourist places like Granada or Leon or 
on the Ometepe Island and stuff like that. I know I'm saying it wrong, but <laughs> it's a really cool place you gotta check out. I would have cash with you. The, it's relatively safe here. Obviously, you wanna, you wanna keep your eyes open, lock your stuff up in your hotel room. If they have a safe, definitely use that. If they have a lock up at the, at the front desk, you wanna use those things and break your cash up into different groups. So I have some money with me. I have some money in my bag. My wife has some money with her and money in her bag. And then the, the boys, they have a little bit of money in their bags too. So if, even if we get something stolen, we have other cash out there. Now, in terms of the Cordoba, the currency here, uh, you'll see it will be a C with a dollar sign next to it for the Cordoba. Just know you're gonna stick with the, the bills most of the time and then the 10 and five Cordoba coins is usually what you're gonna be using. So you have that. And if you're gonna tip here, you can tip in dollars or you can tip in, in Cordobas, it's okay. Usually tipping here is about 10% on your bill when you eat. Um, you might want, you wanna leave a couple dollars a day uh, in your hotel room for the staff that cleans that up. Um, if you're gonna go on some of these excursions or you're taking transport, like a hired transport, usually they expect to tip about 10% of what you paid. So if you've had a $30 you know, private ride, you're gonna tip like $3. Okay, on top of that. And what you'll see at some of the bars and restaurants, they'll just have a tip jar. You can just put it in there because uh, you're paying cash anyway, so you can just throw it in there extra. Uh, so there is that. Now with that money, what are you gonna buy? Now, when you come when you come to Nicaragua, um, one of the things you gotta realize is your souvenir shopping, it's not developed souvenir shops so much here. Yeah, you go to Granada, you'll have that. But if you're around the country, there's some basic things you'll see. T-shirts, but the thing is, you're looking at just simple T-shirts, maybe a mask you can buy here. Um, you can get cigars are very popular to take home and you can take those home and a lot of cigar enthusiasts say that Nicaraguan cigars are actually better than Cuban cigars it's just that they're not illegal so you can have those so there's those things you can buy and the thing is when you're looking at going to the stores they usually open from 9 or 10 until 6 they might close at random times but you know in the main towns usually 9 to 6 then things kind of really shut down so make sure you're doing your shopping earlier in the day. Also Sundays, man, Sundays, the, city, the country just kind of stops, okay? Public transport is less, okay? Shops are closed, things like that. So get everything done before Sunday, all right? Now, kind of talking about the transports, they said, oh, it's a little bit slow on Sundays. Overall transport here in Nicaragua, you got, you got a few options. One, there is the chicken bus. I know everybody says chicken bus. Why do they call it a chicken bus? Yeah, yeah, there's really chickens in there. No, really. There might be a chicken or a goat or like when I was in the last one I was on, there's a whole aisle of platanes, of bananas in there. And then all they you know, taking the beer bottles as well. And it is a very much an experience to take the chicken bus around Nicaragua. And if you're gonna be going long distances, those local buses, they're super cheap. So like for an hour ride or hour and a half ride, you're only gonna pay like $1. Okay, it is really, really cheap. We took a half hour ride yesterday. It was 30 cents. It was 10 Cordobas, okay? So you have that. And the thing is, it can be quite an experience. So if you're gonna be taking those buses, do pack lightly. You cannot have a lot of stuff there. And these, these, these buses you'll see here, they're the old yellow school buses from the US. They just repainted them a lot of times or sometimes not so much to make them here. And you will have that. And you do have limited space there. So don't be bringing those big suitcases and try to use a chicken bus. It's not gonna happen. Have the smaller backpacks, stuff like that. Now, if you don't wanna take the chicken bus, but you should at least once, it's quite the experience. You can take the express buses, which go faster and stop less often. Um, they do cost a bit more. You can hire drivers or private private drivers or, or private um, shuttles and stuff like that. They will cost more. So, for example, uh, what I saw was the you know three dollar bus ride that I was looking at to go to Granada was a fifteen dollar you know uh, shuttle ride, and then when I had a group of people, it was like. $30 per person in our own little private car. And so you have these different kind of prices out there. And a lot of times how you're gonna decide your transport is really on time. Because when you take the chicken buses, they literally stop all the time. And if you see one going down the road, just wave. There are bus stops, but they'll stop anywhere. So you just wave them down and get on. And so it takes a lot longer when you take those chicken buses. The express buses, they stop too, but stop less often. So you're usually better off in speed. And if, you, and if time's really of an essence, do get that shuttle or do hire a private driver kind of stuff to get you there. Because if you're only here for a week or so, maybe you don't have time to spend all that extra time on the buses. So you do want to take, take care about that. Also, with the taxis here, you might be a little shocked, is when you get in a taxi here, they might let other people in. Because you're not paying for the whole taxi, you're paying for your seat in the taxi. Okay? 
So make sure if you want to have that taxi just to yourself, tell them I want to pay for the whole taxi. And so you will pay more, but you get the whole taxi to yourself. Okay. Now other stuff you might want to know about in terms of internet, Wi-Fi, phones. We've got, I mean, I've got AT&T and my normal Samsung phone here, and we've had connection pretty much everywhere we've gone. We've had 4G, actually quite a few places too. We've seen lots of Wi-Fi, lots of free internet, uh, internet cafes, and even in the small and medium-sized towns. So you are going to be okay with that. And, and also, if you just want to get a chip, when you cross the border in from Costa Rica, or you fly in, people will be selling you phone cards for here, so you can just get a new chip. And if your phone's unlocked, you can just put it in your phone and do that. Now, the next thing we got to talk about is the water here in Nicaragua. You do not drink the water in Nicaragua. Do not drink the water. You'll see big tubs of water, big jugs of water in your hotels and stuff like that. That's the water you drink. That's what you do to brush your teeth, these kind of things, all right? Don't drink the tap water because you can get very sick. Also, you want to pay attention when you're going out to eat. Is the food prepared and cooked all the way through? We haven't had any problems with that, but you do want to have a heads up on that. Um, some other kind of safety things to look out for, like I said, you know, make sure you're locking your stuff up. Always pay attention when you're on the buses. Make sure you're watching your stuff, okay? You want to you know, check in your things, things like that. We haven't seen too many problems in Nicaragua, but it does happen. Also, the beaches here are fantastic, and it's a great place to learn how to surf. But you want to make sure somebody is watching your stuff, because if you just leave it on the beach, I mean... It's not just in Nicaragua that happens. That happens in Brazil, that happens in the U.S., that happens in lots of places. So you do want to pay attention for that. Now, another safety thing I would say is, notice how red my face is? I was wearing 70, 70 SPF. The sun here, we're near the equator, it is super strong. I had 50 on my body and 70 on my face, and I still got red. So you do want to be really safe for that, okay? So do be careful with the sun when you are here. Also, the mosquitoes can be a bit... <clears throat> frustrating let's say so do bring some bug spray or some of those bracelets to keep the bugs away if you got little kids i do recommend that because yes there will be bugs bothering you when you are here and the thing is let's say you do get a little ill you do drink the water or you eat something bad or you just have tummy troubles anyway when you go to the bathroom here the toilets it's normal toilets no worries but remember you do not throw the toilet paper into the toilet there'll be a basket next to the toilet and you throw the toilet paper there because the pipes here really can't handle the, the toilet paper as well so put it in the bin next to the toilet another safety thing you got to watch out for is the heat i mean here on the coast you can tell with the wind and everything i mean i've got two wind socks on my microphone by the way and it's not that windy here on the coast the heat you don't notice it as much because of the wind but when you go in inland man that heat can be oppressive so do stay hydrated with a bottle of water not just the tonya but with other things because the heat can be really really tough okay especially for the little ones now let's what about the plugs what about the electricity here the electricity and the plugs are just like in the u.s it's the two you know flat insert things here and you'll see the little dot on the bottom you don't always get the bottom dot but most of the time it's at least the two two ones like this not the european two circle ones but the u.s two flat ones you want to have that and it is also the u.s currency um, currency <laughs> the u.s current for electricity coming down here so you should be prepared for that but if you're coming from the u.s your plugs like my samsung plug boom right in the wall no problem whatsoever and then the last thing i want to talk about are the is the food here what are you going to eat when you're here and drink when you're here look i'm not going to lie to you you will eat rice you will eat beans you will eat beans, you will eat rice, you will eat that a lot. So for breakfast, you have gallo pinto, which is rice and beans stirred together, kind of fried up a little bit with scrambled eggs or some kind of egg. And then at lunch, you'll have the same gallo pinto with you know rice and beans with maybe chicken. And then dinner, you have rice and beans with meat. It can get a bit tiresome sometimes, but just know rice and beans is a big thing here, okay? The fruits here are fantastic. You have a lot of fruit and fruit juices. Um, one thing I recommend is maybe have a, a uh, fruit mixed with milk, kind of batido or a liquido, like a milkshake. Those are always really good. I mean, the thing is here, the street food is fantastic. And the thing is, a lot of the street food only comes out at about 5 or 6 o'clock at night at the park or at the beach or something like that. You'll see them roll them out with their, with their wagons. Oh man, if you can have the, the nacatamales. It's in a plantain leaf, okay? It's made with corn, cornmeal on the outside. I've made with tuna fish or onion and rice, of course. And the other things inside, you got to have one of those. Also makes for a quick snack to have when you're here. Empanadas are a nice little snack to have here as well. There's all kinds of good little tasty treats to have. If you're near the coast, 
The fish is always good. If it's a fry up or a grill up or something like that, you will do very well here. And the thing is, the food here is very nice and it's very refreshing, and, and but it is very basic and you will have a lot of repetition. So I have seen tourists, like when we went to San Juan del Sur, you could tell that people have been in Nicaragua for a while because all of a sudden there was pizza place, an ice cream place, like, oh, pizza, let's go. <laughs> they were so excited for it. Hamburger, let's go. Because you do get a little overdone with the beans and rice. Anyway, oh, well, of course, you want to know what you need to drink here. Obviously, not the water. Dude, all the international sodas you're used to, they have those here and some local stuff as well. But the two beers you have here, there's Tonya and Victoria. Tonya is a really smooth beer. That's the one I really like. Victoria has just a slight bitter flavor to it, but it's still decent. So those are the two beers you're going to get everywhere in the country. And then, of course, you want to have rum. And Flor de Caña, that's the, uh, that's the rum from here in Nicaragua. You should have some of that. Anyway, I hope this helps you know a little bit more about what you should do or what you should be ready for when you come to Nicaragua. If you want to learn more, you know, how to tip in Nicaragua, we went through that though. But if you want more, more information on that, uh, the shocks of Nicaragua, the don'ts of Nicaragua, things like that, we have that all on our website at waltersworld.com. It's also on our YouTube channel, and we really appreciate your likes and subscriptions, whether it's here on YouTube or it's on Facebook or it's on Twitter or Instagram. Just find Walters World and you'll find us there. So I'll say adios de Nicaragua or bye from Nicaragua. Have a good time.